Hey, how's it going guys? Zedai here. So I wanted to share my thoughts on Gamescom 2024. So it just wrapped up and my initial impressions, honestly, they're not very good. As you can read by the title of this video and of course the thumbnail, I was not exactly impressed. In fact, I will closely get to disappointed with the showcase. I feel like this was a, more or less of a waste of time of two hours of just watching the show. Nevertheless, I still had some good games that I definitely want to mention that have made an appearance in here in the Gamescom. And this is why I will be on purposely just skipping out on a lot of games that genuinely have no interest for me. And yet some of the games at least I should mention, but I don't think necessarily that I will be getting them because they're just not for me. And I will get into them as well, do not worry. So first of all, the first game that was presented, and it's considered to be more of a pre-show, <laughs> and basically the first game I thought was genuinely interesting is in Tor... How do you pronounce this? In Notria, the last song. I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's coming September the 19th, and the reason I'm also mentioning it in here is because this is a Souls-like experience. And the thing that why I'm also kind of confident with this title is because I actually have not had an opportunity of playing the demo and I did, I played it and it was really good. It was really nicely polished as well and it's true and true in terms of being Souls-like type of an experience. I think it's actually worth it. Anyway, let's continue on through the showcase. With the showcase on the way, uh, first announcement more or less I just want to mention is Borderlands 4. It's going to be coming in 2025. I think it's a very big mistake. I think they need to push it. Push it to 2026. We have way too many games coming in 2025. Too many. And it's not even the year, uh, the end of the year yet. On top of that, we also have uh, the Game Awards. And that's going to have a lot more announcements and reveals that will be for the upcoming games in 2025. So Borderlands, I think it always needs more time in the oven. Because every time when Borderlands come out, at least these newer Borderlands games, they're kind of disappointing because they're not polished up through and through but in this case I think they need to take more time and put and push this game to 2026 nevertheless I can't really state and say what is it that I liked or disliked about this teaser because we really didn't see much of anything other than the mask and of course the title and some the planet and, and the you know the year of this release well presumably will be coming out in 2025 again I hope it gets pushed though so up next was Call of Duty Black Ops 6 I don't know what to say about that. It's Call of Duty. I definitely am interested, but I can't say that it's going to be anything spectacular or, or interesting. They, Even though they have kind of showcased here in terms of its gameplay, something a little bit different than usual Call of Duty is, but we have seen it already from previous Call of Duty titles. So don't let this fool you. This is more or less closer to a gimmick than actually a Call of Duty experience. If you like Call of Duty classic experience with bombastic shooting and first person action, and I mean real action, yeah, this is it. This is for you. And everything that you've just seen here, it's only going to be a part of like one to maximum to two different missions that you'll be a part of. I'll even argue and say that's going to be only one that particular mission that you will have an opportunity to take a photographs as you've seen from this gameplay. Nevertheless, it just don't let it fool you. This is more or less of a gimmick. This is going to be a part of only one, like we mentioned, maximum two missions. And that's it. But it's not to say that's a bad thing because unfortunately Call of Duty's are not known of having long campaigns and how how it has been going about it seems like it's gonna be maybe four hours experience of campaign but I'm still glad the way we still have a fantastic look towards the zombies of Call of Duty Black Ops 6 that looks phenomenal and yeah a lot of people are looking forward to multiplayer uh, part of the Call of Duty experience as well nevertheless just wanted to mention here I am looking you know I'm looking relatively forward to it if that makes sense I will mention this here, even though I have no interest in this, I'm talking about Goat Simulator, and this is a remaster from the, well, I believe it's from the first Goat Simulator. Uh, it looks whatever. It's not really for me, I've never played any Goat Simulator games, but I know there are a lot of fun, people say it's fantastic, you should do so, and perhaps in the future I will. It's not a game Persona 3 Reload. Unfortunately for me, it's, I'm not that interested. Uh, I like more closer to third-person perspective games, maybe first-person perspective games. This is not that, at least not for me. 
anyway, I'm moving on. So, Dying Light, the Beast, we actually knew that this will be, you know, getting revealed at the Gamescom because uh, Jeff Keighley uh, revealed this weird looking teaser of a girl in the woods. She was with her boyfriend, presumably, and the boyfriend was, you know, the cameraman as well. And then one moment she's just getting attacked, unknown things that's going on in the woods. And then after, at the end of the scene, basically she gets dragged or something, just something really weird happens. Honestly, looking at this, I'm still a little bit confused what the hell am I looking at, because I do know now that I read up a little bit more about this, because initially I thought it was almost going to be a brand new game, <laughs> but no, it's not. It's more closer to the following, if you guys know it. Uh, Dying Light had the following, and this is basically a, an expansion, or like a standalone big experience that is even bigger than an expansion uh, for Dying Light uh, game. But anyway, let's continue on. We're skipping quite a lot of games, but I want to get into a little game called Ark Raiders, and it's coming 2025. Playtest is actually going to be available this fall, and this trailer was shit. It was it was just shit. It was nothing. There was nothing shown here. Even though we did see back in 2021, I believe, uh, like snippets of gameplay of what it actually had to introduce. But nevertheless, it's been already, what, two to three years since last time we've seen it. So, you know, we can't really take a lot from that, from those old footages, from old gameplay footages. In this case, uh, yeah, I don't know what to take out of this. Like, this just didn't convince me otherwise. But I wanted to mention in this uh, anyway and share my thoughts since our creators has been... Well, a lot of people have been anticipating for this release anyway. Skipping a few more games, I'm next going to Dune Awakening, and it's coming to PC early of 2025, and thankfully they did confirm that PlayStation and Xbox release will be, well, will be announced sometime soon. Everything that they showcase here with a breakdown, what you can do within this game, looks really, really good. I don't know how it will play out, because a lot of times when the games are so ambitious, they never really work out, at least to some extent. In this case, I hope it will be something special because I'm keen. I'm very much interested in checking it out and I'm definitely giving it a go on my PlayStation 5 console and just to see what it's got in store. Or at least something different uh, comparing to older Doom games. At least this is a lot bigger experience. Uh, perhaps maybe pe people were not even experienced, like expecting to see something of this grand scale. But yeah, I think this could be a treat. I think this could be something special. All right, few games afterwards. Well, at least one game afterwards. Uh, I have to... I don't know how I feel about this, honestly. Monster Hunter Wilds. <laughs> so, Monster Hunter Wilds coming in 2025. We did know about that. We've seen trailers already. And the trailer that I showcased here, it looks fantastic. It looks like Monster Hunter game, as you would expect. Now, I have played Monster Hunter World, and I have played a Monster Hunter... I think it was called Iceborne, right? It basically, it's been a very long time ago since I played those two. An expansion and basically a, a main game of Monster Hunter World. And it didn't really grip me to the point that I would be looking forward to Monster Hunter Wilds and playing it. But maybe it could turn my mind around and maybe I'll give it a chance once again. I don't know, but just I feel like it needs to have a li little bit easier time or friendlier welcome if that makes sense because monster hunter world was not that game for me at least you there was a very big ceiling of you actually had to learn all the game mechanics that it had introduced as well and that was not really the big problem though because i did end up you know learning about it my problem was that how long it takes to hunt the monsters it was ridiculous it was too long dragons and things that you go around like it can take you almost an hour, if not longer, to fight one particular beast. It was aggravating, in my personal opinion. But I can see some of the ways that they've done it here. For example, you can have your own mount, and so this means that you can cut uh, cut on some of the exploration and getting to the point A to B quickly. This could be a way of actually telling me, okay, you don't have to waste too much time on going through the adventure while you're trying to kill this specific beast because he constantly keeps on running away from you. Anyway, that's just my little thoughts regarding Monster Hunter. I don't know yet. I think I'm keen on it, but again, I'm very cautiously op optimistic. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic for people that love this sort of titles, but for me, I'm not there. I'm not there yet. 
I will mention it in here, but again, I have no interest. Starfield Rev 8 update is actually free and it's coming tonight. And also the Shattered Space DLC will be out September the 30th, 2024. So basically, Starfield people, if there are any, they have something to look forward to. But unfortunately, it looks at things how Starfield has ended up being. I really don't see much of the longevity within this title. Uh, like comparing this of course to like Fallout and uh, like Skyrim and, and Elder Scrolls as just as an example. Marvel's Rivals coming December the 6th and it's getting finally going to be released but yeah whatever I'm not really interested I just genuinely wanted to mention it in here because I know for a fact that a lot of people were interested in this title. Then we quickly get into uh, I'm gonna skip a few games but Batman Arkham Shadows uh, just looking at this title just pisses me off more, knowing the fact what happened with Suicide Squad, uh, you know, the development team that made our Arkham games, and now looking at this, and it's a VR exclusive, this is just like, literally spitting at you, like, and the fans of the fan, like, just who are fans of this, like, Arkham universe, that style games, like, Batman with Arkham, man. Arkhamverse, that's what you call it, right? <laughs> but yeah, I'm very disappointed. It's just, it's just aggravating looking at this footage. Skipping a few games once again, and now <laughs> we're getting into another game, kind of resembles of a Souls-like experience. So it's first Berserker, Kazan, and technical test is actually going to be happening on October the 11th, and it will be out sometime early in 2025. I don't know what to make out of this. It seems cool, at least from the trailers. I have my eyes open to it, if that makes sense. And yeah, I hope it will be something special. But again, we've seen so many times these sorts of like, AKA Souls-like experiences and just never went anywhere. All right, so here's the last two. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. What a dumb name, Great Circle. <laughs> Uh, it's coming out December the 9th, 2024, for Xbox, Steam, and of course, Game Pass. So, from this footage, it didn't tell me that I should not be, what's the word, worried. Because after looking at this footage, this gameplay, and what everything that I had to show, it just makes me think, oh my god, Machine Games wasted opportunity. They should have just continued making Wolfenstein or a brand new IP, because I think that Machine Games making an Indiana Jones is a wasted opportunity. That's just my thoughts. And on top of that, we also getting an announcement that Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is also coming uh, to PlayStation 5 in spring, sometime in spring of 2025. When I heard this, I was like, no thank you. It's just genuinely. Instead, I would have been more, a little bit more interested if this would have been Starfield. And, you know, oh my god, it's coming out in sometime spring of 2025 for Starfield. That would have been a lot more appealing. Because what I've seen from Indiana Jones doesn't seem like it's going to be people's favorites. And on top of that, that this game's also coming out on PlayStation 5. Well, that kind of tells you everything that... Uh, that Microsoft is not exactly hopeful for this title and that they have to make sure that they recuperate the cost because the majority of the people and market is on PlayStation side and of course they know that they're going to be losing a lot of revenue if they don't release some of their titles on, on consoles like that number one console the PlayStation 5 again guys I'm not saying number one console is the best console I'm talking about in terms of how many people are playing on that certain console in this case the PlayStation 5 and it's just, what is it, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, something like that, that there's a far majority of the PlayStation 5s out there than Xbox Series Xs, or, and, aka, SSs as well. Jesus, there's naming schemes, ridiculous, Microsoft, gotta, gotta think about a better naming scheme. <laughs> Nevertheless, one of the biggest surprises personally for me. Now, we did know it would have been coming sometime soon, but we did not know when. I think that this is number one game for me that was the best surprise that we finally, finally know that this game is coming. I'm so glad. Mafia the Old Country has been announced. More will be revealed in December of 2024, presumably, you know, the Game Awards. <sighs> I cannot wait. I am so looking forward to this. I love Mafia games. I'm so thankful the way we got the remake of Mafia. I'm even glad the way we got the remaster of Mafia 2. It's just such a nice 
game. I love the storytelling as well. And now we're going back into the past of Mafia, the old country. Because honestly, when I was starting to watch this, well, teaser trailer, right? I was looking at it. It was like, okay, wait, is this Mafia? Like to my mind, back of my mind. But then no, 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 it doesn't look like Mafia. It's too old, right? It's just the time, the time, it doesn't seem to be correct. But then I started watching it more. Okay, wait, wait, are those castles? That can't be right. This cannot be Mafia. And then Mafia, the old country comes up. And I was like, oh man, this is intriguing. I am so down for this. And I'm so looking forward to this. So honestly, guys, this whole game show, there's only one game that really got me pumped. And obviously it is Mafia, the old country. Because no other games out here in this showcase that got me interested. Because honestly, while I was watching the showcase, half a time, well, it's not true, it's an over-exaggeration, but I was bloody falling asleep, right? And some points I was already kind of asleep. <laughs> but then I was just like, when is this gonna be getting good again? Because halfway through the show, I was already zoned out. But then the beginning of the show was interesting and the end of the show was interesting. And then we finally got Mafia, the old country announcement. And I'm just like, thank you. It was worth the two hours of wait, even though now that I think about it, it definitely wasn't. <laughs> because obviously, you know, I could have just seen this in the announcements and all over the other social media stuff. So you didn't really need to watch any showcases at all for this. <sighs> Nevertheless, guys, that's all I wanted to mention for tonight. Tell me down in the comments as well, what did you think about the, you know, well, the Gamescom showcase for 2024? Honestly, in my opinion, like I already mentioned, it's just a disappointment. <sighs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys all later.